Welcome to another episode of Vet Talk. This is your boy, Brother Vince. Man, I'm back at you. And today, man, we're doing a prayer for veterans and military personnel, man. Um, Just short, brief um introduction before I get into my message. Please, man, like, share, subscribe to this channel. If you have any content as a veteran that you want to share um, your story or resource for veterans or you're a veteran owned business and you like to come on the show and present your business to the rest of the veteran community, then please, man, like, share, subscribe, hit me up in my email, vettalktexas at gmail.com. Again, that um, email address is vettalktexas at gmail.com. And we can schedule time and get together and go ahead and, you know, get that content created so we can get out to all these veterans out here that need assistance. And I understand that, you know, um, my target area is Texas. But at the same time, if you're in a different state and you like to create content with me and for your state, then I'm willing to do that, too, because at the end of the day, it's all about helping the veterans no matter where they are. So today, man, we're going to get into. Uh, my prayer for veterans. And before I even get into the prayer, one of the things I want to talk to you about is as a veteran or even as an individual who's not a veteran, if you are looking at this and you're a non-veteran, one of the things that you have to do in order for prayer to be effective for you is you have to be saved, man. I'm not saying that people who aren't saved can't pray, but if you want effective Fervent prayer, the Bible said, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So as a believer, it's better when you pray. If you're a non-believer, then you're just praying in vain and God is not hearing you. And that's why a lot of your prayers are being answered by someone else outside of God. Because a lot of times people have this notion that God is answering their prayers. And a lot of times it may be the God of your belly. It may be the God of mammon, which gives money. I mean, there can be a number of just different things out there granting you your wishes like a genie. But the God of the Bible requires obedience. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. And what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his what? Soul. So I don't want you to lose your soul just because you believe you're praying to God and you're getting things. So I want to offer you salvation. And you may say, Brother Vince, how do I get saved? How do I become a believer? Well, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, then you shall be saved. So all it takes is confession. I know some people take people through a prayer of repentance. I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. That's good. It's good to pray always because it's one of the key things that we do as a believer. That's the way we communicate with God. But I'm just going to take you through a simple step. So confess with your mouth. Jesus is Lord. Do you truly, truly believe that he's Lord? Do you believe that in your heart? If you believe that in your heart, then just in that split second, you're saved. Please get with me, veterans. If you have resources, if you have tools or anything that you believe that can help veterans, please get with Vet Talk so that we can get we can create content so that you can get this information out there to the veterans because this channel isn't just about me talking about being a believer, even though that's the most important key ingredient to 99% of the things I'm saying. But at the same time, I want to reach a broad view of people. Like, I just don't want to just reach believers. I want to reach non-believers because my prayer is that you would get saved. I, my That's one of my prayers. I want to see you saved. Why? Because I remember what God saved me from. I remember being a vagabond. I remember being a chief sinner. I remember the life that I lived. Some of the people may be watching this. Remember who I was. That's who I was. That's what I've done. But I thank God that he said in his word in Romans that there's therefore none, no condemnation to them, which are in Christ Jesus. But it's a process. Does that mean that you're going to be perfect? No. It's a, it's a journey. You know what I'm saying? The race is not given to the swift or the strong, but it's to, for those who endure to the end. So it's a process, man. It's an endurance race. Just like when we went into the military, there was a process. You couldn't go to deployment before going to your unit. Couldn't go to your unit before going to basic training. Well, as a Christian, as a believer, there's basic training. And the one thing we know about training, sometimes you do your best. Sometimes you fail. 
Sometimes you make mistakes. Sometimes you don't always get it right. But that's what grace and mercy is for. And I don't care what you have done in this lifetime. There is grace for you. God will grant you grace if you are willing to confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, accept them in your life, allow the Holy Spirit to fill you. You're you're a part of that people who chose them, the select few that are basically giving the benefits like a employee who works a full time job, not a part time. It comes with benefits. It's the difference between being a full time Christian and a part time Christian. A part time Christian don't receive all the benefits. Or um, probably, you know, to be honest, they don't even receive benefits at all because, again, I mean, you part time. You can't be part time. You know, old folks say you can't straddle the fence. You got to either be on one side or the other. I know some people say you can't be hard or cold, but I've learned from a great pastor on um, what that really means. You know, Hot and cold is good, but lukewarm, you can't be that way. Lukewarm Christian is a Christian who believes that they can live for Christ, but yet sit at the table with devils. Most people would say, man, Jesus sat with sinners. Yeah, he did, but he didn't go to the sinners. They came to him. And when they came to him, they came for change. They didn't just come to him so that they can still remain the same. And the Bible say you are the salt of the earth. And if the salt loses this, savior or flavor as I would want to say but it's a savior then what good is it than to be trodden under the foot of men and you don't want to be that type of believer who's getting trodden by this world beaten down this world you know in any way to be honest with you, you are going to get you know to a certain degree you are going to get beaten down by the world because the world shouldn't love you because you're not part of the world so I mean you know, just a lot that we have to do as believers, but I want to stick to the main thing. And the main thing is I have a prayer for you veterans. So I'm going to take you into this prayer. But one of the things I want to invite most veterans um, who may not know to come to this, understand, I want to, I want to help you out. I want to bring you in, invite you in and let you know that in order for prayer to work for you, you have to forgive. You have to forgive. You have to forgive. And if you're trying to figure out where I'm coming from, turn to first John, the fifth chapter, go down to the 16th verse. And it states, if any man sees his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. And I do not say that he should pray for it. So there is a sin which you can commit that Paul is describing and he's talking about. And he says that this sin is unto death. And there basically is no reason for me or anyone to pray for this because in order for you to receive it, you have to give it. And that unpardonable sin is unforgiveness. Yes, unforgiveness. If you are holding any kind of unforgiveness in your heart towards someone, in order for your prayers to be effective, believer, non-believer, you have to forgive. There is no way for you to walk around with unforgiveness in your heart and for you to be forgiven. You have to forgive. So part of our prayer, or majority of our prayer, is going to be talking about forgiving. This is an opportunity for you to forgive because it's not going to benefit you for me to give you these resources to talk about all these different things that I'm talking about. And yet you holding up, holding something in your heart, which can be re the reason why you're suffering from certain issues that you have in your life. Like I had to learn that because I was holding contentment in my heart for my father and my mother being mad as a child for things that my mind perceived to be one way when it was really, when it was really another I had unforgiveness in my heart and I was walking around damaging people because of that unforgiveness. That unforgiveness led to me doing a lot of things that I shouldn't have done. And when I came to Christ, one of the things I had to do was I had to forgive because you're asking God to forgive you of your sins, but yet you want to hold on to what other people have done. Am I saying what they've done has not been a tragic thing that has happened in your life? No, I'm not saying that. I'm pretty sure what some of you have been through 
it has been very bad, but I want you to think about something that God did for me in the sense of he showed me how my sins affected not only people, but how he felt about it. Because think about it. Why would a, a holy and righteous God send his son down who is holy and righteous to come down and die for other people's sins for them to turn around and say, man, you know what? I'm not forgiving them. You got to understand, man, that he knew no wrong, but he came down and took on the form of a servant and he died for your sins. Then when he was on his cross, during a moment where he could have bashed the folks that were doing what they were doing, and he looked down, uh, looked to heaven in a sense, and say, Father, forget him, for they know not what they do. He was able to forgive, even in his moment of death, he was able to forgive. So forgiveness is a must, man. It's not a thing that you can decide if you really want to do it or if you're going to partially do it. No, you have to forgive. And you may be asking the question, how do I know I have forgiven? You know you have forgiven when you can pray for a person, when you can love a person, because the Bible says, bless those who curse you, you know, who misuse you spitefully, you know, mistreated you. You know, it's told you to bless, not curse. So if you can't do good to the people who done you wrong, then you have an issue. Am I saying that you have to keep them in your life? No, you don't have to keep them in your life. But at the same time, the way you heap a coal upon your enemy head is by the Bible standards. The only way you can do that is by by blessing them, loving them. You know what I'm saying? Love your neighbor as thyself. That's one of Jesus' command. Other outside of you know loving the Lord thy God with all thy heart. So you have to you know love. You have to forgive. You have to let things go. And if you're willing to do that and you're ready to do that, then we about to go on a prayer that's going to help us do that. So we're going to start out with Matthew 6 and 9. Um, the reason why I start out my prayer like this is because this is part of what I do at my church. This is how I've learned to do intercessory prayer, how to pray. I learn how to pray God's word. So I just want to stick to God's word because I know his word shall return back to him void. And that which he sent that out to accomplish, it shall accomplish, man. Because the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with the word was the word was with God. and The word was God. So at the end of the day, I know his word is going to stand. So let's just pray his word. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. For father God, you are the greatest and the most powerful, all knowing, all seeing God. You are the creator of the heavens and the universe, Lord. There is no one like you, Lord. So we thank you, Lord, for being our heavenly father. And we know that your name is hallowed because, Lord, there is no God like you. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. And, Lord, we just thank you for, Father God, for being God alone. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are the Most High God. And it's you alone that we worship. You said, Thou shalt have no other God before. Um, We should serve no other God. So, Lord, we just give our lives to you, Lord, and allow you to be our God. And, Father God, thou wilt. Uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven, Lord. We ask that, Father God, your will be done, Lord. We know that you have given us as mankind our will, which allows us to either choose you or to choose to live for Satan. Well, Lord, we choose to live for you. So we ask that, Lord, your will will be done in earth as it is in heaven, Lord. And when we ask that, Lord, you will lead us not into temptation, Lord, but deliver us from evil. Lord, we ask that, Lord, you would deliver us. We ask that, Lord, you would lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, we are faced with situations from day to day, Lord. Rather it be, Father God, you know, filing communi uh, filthy communication from our coworkers or, you know, we are faced with, you know, the sins that tempt us and easily causes us at times to fall, Lord. We ask that, Lord, you would lead us past those things, Lord. We ask that you would deliver us from the evil of this world, Lord. Rather it be, Father God, the things that they're doing in the government to affect us. Rather it be things that we have done ourselves, Lord. We ask that you would deliver us from all those things, Lord. Because thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, Lord. And, Father God, everything belongs to you, Lord. 
There's no one, Father God, that can replace you, that can take away from who you are, Lord, because your kingdom will rule forever, Lord. So, Father God, you said in your word, Father God, in Matthew 6 and 14, Father God, for if we forgive men their trespasses, Father God, you will also forgive us of our trespasses, Lord. So your requirement, Father God, for us to be forgiven, Lord, is for us to forgive, Lord. And you said that if we didn't forgive, Lord, Paul will address it and say, Father God, there is a sin that leads us to death, Lord. And that sin is unforgiveness, Lord. So, Lord, I ask that you would help my brother and sister right now, Father God, to, Father God, get rid of that unforgiveness, Lord. I pray that, Lord, you would help my brother and sister right now, Lord, to forgive those who have mis misused them, mistreated them, Lord, abused them, Lord, molested them, Lord, that may have, Father God, um, introduced them into a homosexual lifestyle, Lord. Father God, forgive that. Help them to forgive that person, Lord. Help them to forgive that husband or that wife, Lord, who... You know, deserted them during deployment, Lord, took all their money, Lord, put them in a situation where, Lord, they came back and, Lord, everything that they had worked for on deployment was gone, Lord. Lord, I pray for that sister or that brother, Lord, who might have been in a unit, Lord, that Father God may have, you know, alienated them, Father God, may have had a person who, you know, profiled them or made them look to be a bad person. And yet, Father God, they lied, Lord. I pray that, Lord, you would help that person to forgive that person for whatever it did, Lord. Maybe it might have been an issue that happened before the military, Father God. It could have been that childhood that they grew up without a parent, Lord, or they grew up with one parent, Lord, or they grew up in a situation where, Lord, they were, Father God, in, um, you know, they were living with a relative or, Father God, they were in the orphanage, Lord, and they found themselves feeling unwanted, unneeded, unloved, Lord. Help them to forgive those who have wronged them, Lord, because, Lord, we need your forgiveness, Lord. And in order for us to be forgiven, Lord, you said we must forgive, Lord. So I ask the Lord, you would help them, Father God, to forgive, Lord. Help them to forgive, Lord, because, Lord, we need your forgiveness, Lord. And in your word, Father God, it says that all have sinned and fallen short of your glory, Lord, and that none are righteous, Lord. No, not one, Lord. So it just allow us to understand that, Lord. We are not righteous, just like they're not righteous for what they have done, Lord. But, Lord, we pray that you would help us to forgive those people, Lord. And not only forgive them, Lord, but to be able to come across paths with these people, Lord, and to walk in love, Lord. You say love covers a multitude of sin, Lord. And your word said that you, God is love and love is God, Lord. So, Lord, because we are praying to you, Lord, we welcome you in our heart, Lord. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, to fill us with your fruits, so that we can love like God because he is love. So fill us with your love, Lord, so that we can not only walk in forgiveness, Lord, but we can walk in love, Lord, because you said love covers a multitude of sin, Lord. And we ask the Lord you help us to do these things, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So brothers and sisters, I pray that this prayer helps you out with forgiving because God truly, truly loves you. He truly, truly loves you. Now, I know he loves you because the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, one and only begotten son, saying whomever um, should believe should not perish, but have everlasting life. And God wants you to have everlasting life. I know he does because I'm undeserving of it. But because of his grace and mercy, I'm here today. It's nothing that I did to deserve it. I didn't do nothing, man. The Bible says it was his love and kindness that drew me under him. I didn't draw myself. It wasn't because I went to church. It wasn't because I grew up in church. If anything, that's what made me hate church because of some of the things I had to go through in church. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it was his love and kindness that drew me. And this is love and kindness that's drawing you. And I pray that you will be blessed by this prayer. And if you need anything as far as any other prayer, then just feel free to contact me, man. I'm willing to help you, you know, um, especially brothers. If you're a single female, um, then I'll try to make sure that I find somebody to help you out because I try to not cross into those gray areas and do, you know, that type of thing. But I will, you know, do a public prayer or, you know, write out one to kind of assist and help you out. But then also my, um, the one thing I will say is, um, you know, find a local church to go to, man. 
find a local church to go to. If you're not in church, find a local church, you know, pray. And, and, and what I mean, and what I mean, when I say find a local church, pray to the Lord and ask him, Lord, give me direction as to where I should go for church. Ask him, pray to him. And if you're not hearing from him and he's not speaking to your heart, then it could be some unforgiveness still left. And you need to ask him to show you what it is that's blocking him from hearing you. And I'm honestly going to be honest to you. The Lord will show you. He's showing me each and every day. There's always something he's showing me about myself that need to go. And I believe he'll do the same for you. This has been another episode with your boy, Brother Vince, for Vet Talk. Vet Talk out.